to the whole acumenic environment uh, is the easy capability to see and deal with reporting analytics. And you can begin to see, we could have a dashboard that's indicating by work center, what's our cues. We could begin to see labor and material variances by month. We could begin to see how we're doing with production orders. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about quality control today. Also, so I could begin to see from a quality aspect, I could see what vendors are good, what vendors are bad, uh, the various tests that we're doing well on, the various tests that we're failing, all things that are gonna be gathered in real time and proactively allow us to go out uh, and be able to talk to vendors, change our processes. So again, there's an unlimited amount of dashboards and as Lucid uh, begins to talk to you in detail with regards to key performance indicators and other things, you'll see how we they could begin to help you create these dashboards. Going back to the slide uh, that we talked about what is critical in uh, process manufacturing, I do, before we drive into detail, want to you know, go through this physical and chemical property analysis that you, you do not see within a normal system that let's just say is involved in discrete manufacturing. Because what we have here on this screen is this is a particular formula for an item. Uh, we'll talk about weight and pounds later, but these are all the materials that I'm using. And it's nice to know uh, what we need to make and how many. You'll also notice that there could be different units of measure. But again, if we're in chemicals, if we're in food, there's reporting requirements. And really what's important uh, in this situation is we need to keep track of arsenic and lead and candium, right? how those actual items were made. And this is really how we're gonna be evaluated. So the infrastructure of the system, which we'll get into in a little bit, allows the system to say, and allow you to say, gee whiz, this is what I have. And this is the end result of that for labeling purposes. Now from a reformization aspect, what I could begin to do is I could begin to look at, you know, those materials. So I'm gonna look at those materials. You could see if I just highlight uh, this area pigment, this is letting me know that these two items attribute to the pigment. If I go to arsenic, it's indicating that this is the one uh, item that attributes to arsenic. But what I could do here uh, is I could actually go in and say, you know what, my target value was 3.8. I'm a little over this target value, so I wanna change this value to four. And now what the system's gonna do is it's gonna reformulate. It's gonna tell me how I should make this product to begin to meet these label requirements, nutritional requirements, uh, these chemical requirements. And in interactively, it's gonna let me know that potentially if I uh, change something in lead and one of those items here over here changes, it's gonna affect another one. So the whole ability to simultaneously manage the raw materials that go into your uh, product, as well as managing, again, the results of those, the chemical and physical characteristics are critical. If we move to the second piece that is generally critical, within the um, Acumatica framework or process manufacturers in general, it's lot traceability, right? Again, we have to meet various standards uh, for recall purposes. So we have the capability here to do forward and backward scheduling, or I said traceability. And here's an important element that um, is you will decide what inventory transactions you're going to be tracking. And I point out really this issue of transfers and I pull out this this custom return area. Uh, in a prior life, when I was involved in true consulting and in helping out process manufacturers, uh, many times there was defects in their item, right? They got something back and it didn't work. And they would go through all their analysis and they would say, gee whiz, it looks like the raw materials we received correctly. It looks like we produce this correctly. Well, what we would really find in many cases is it's the movement of the product, which is a traceability issue, right? Someone had some items uh, that were supposed to be in an ambient warehouse. They moved them into a refrigerator. Uh, so really the defect had nothing to do with the product that we received or purchased, the product we made, how we made it. It really related to how we move that around the warehouse. And what Acumatica is gonna do for you when we produce these reports, again, a four, this is just an example 
of a backward traceability report. Uh, this also could be in what Acumatica would call a generic inquiry. Uh, and you'll see some generic inquiries as we're going forward. And this is just indicating, right, I did this backward. So here's this chemical that we sold. We know all the inventory transfers it went into. We know the work order that was made on. And if I continue to scroll down, I could see all the issues all the way down to the raw material that was used for that item. So we first of all wanted to go back to what are some of the what are the three uh, key pillars, if I could use that term, uh, within a process manufacturing environment. The first one is readily availability to usable actual information. That could be variances, it could be material things, it could be quality and quality results. Uh, the second piece is physical and chemical properties. Again, it's nice when we hit, could have a lab module integrated directly into our ERP system. And lastly is the traceability, the ability to quickly react if we were to have a problem, as well as allow us to meet uh, various guidelines that we have. With that overview at those three big issues, now I'm gonna drill into some of the details. To make everyone aware, Acumatica is highly configurable. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time on this menu looking at different things, but just to make you aware, and these are some things that Brian and Caitlin cover in other sessions, is you, you simplify this down to exactly what you need. So this is a favorites. So this is just allowing someone to create a customized launch pad if I might want to use that case. Uh, I could launch every application that I need from this particular screen. And again, you could also begin to do that uh, within the confines of the actual system. So you see these stars. These stars is even though I have a very cluttered uh, launch pad right now, at least I, these stars are telling me these are generally the places I need to look. So it's highly configurable, highly customizable, if we could use that term from a, a user standpoint, and therefore it's going to be easy for users to navigate through the system, and you don't always have to navigate through these busy uh, dashboards that I use. I'm now going to go into formulas, and I'm going to go into a particular formula to give some examples of what uh, is slightly different when we begin to move into uh, the realm of process manufacturing. Uh, and I'm gonna stop at the top here, is, and that is weight and volume. It is very typical for process manufacturers to begin to control, have key performance in, um, uh, measures based upon weight and volume, right? At the beginning of the year, or the end of the year, how many gallons did I pump? How many pounds or kilos did I sell? And the infrastructure is set up with base units of measure for corporate wide. So the same way in your accounting system, you're gonna say, you know what, we're doing all reporting on US dollars. You would be able to go into the system and say, you know what, from an operation key performance process, we want our reporting at the end of the year to be done on pounds. Now clearly you're still gonna know units and items that you sell, but at a very high level, you'd like to say, gee whiz, I wish I knew how many pounds I dealt with, or in gallons, and the infrastructure allows you to do that, and you're gonna see that as we go through the process. The first part of making something is, right, how I'm gonna make it. Some people might call this a routing, so I could go through the routing steps that I'm gonna go through, and the capability of having set up and runtime machine hours, those items, so I now have the total cost of the item. I'm gonna make a little bit of a right turn because it's critical, particularly in process manufacturing, that the quality system is embedded into the manufacturing system. So what you see here is you see this QCID. What this is saying is that when someone's done mixing, before we go to the milling operation, we want QC to intervene. We want QC to do a test, which you could see at the bottom, and we want them to test and they, we want them to key in this reading. And that reading needs to have a target value of 100, and, but it could be between 93 and 107. The reason why we wanna do that, going back to some of the things that Brian mentioned, right, efficiency, effectivity, reducing costs. What we wanna do is to make certain if there is a deficiency in this item, we want you to document what that deficiency is or document that it's good but if it's bad let's catch this variance right now let's keep it in this mixing stage where 
maybe we could go back and rework what we're working on to make it meet these targets, or I'm gonna scrap that out. But at least I'm scrapping that out well before I add some other value to the system. Staying on the quality realm, uh, there's checklists. The quality system uh, with regards to the QMS system is designed to do two things. The first one is just what we indicated. It's to be able to allow you to go in and indicate, yes, this is the specification for an item and it meets that specification. The other part in many controlled industries is what we happen to call checklists. That in your, you need some operating instructions. In this case, there's a couple of instructions. In other cases, it might be, we need to make certain the machine was clean, the temperature in the room was right, et cetera. You're able to embed that into here. So what you'll see as we're going through the presentation uh, is you already heard that what you'll see is someone's gonna stop and say, we can't go from operation one to operation two until we validate the product is fit uh, we're now going to say, you know what, we can't even stop this, start this process until someone signs off that the conditions to make a good product have been met. I'm going to take a little bit of a sideways step now uh, to go back to something that I mentioned said, and that is dealing with different weights and volumes and units of measure. And uh, again, hopefully what you've seen is the beauty of Acumatica uh, being able to go into uh, the system and I just click wrong, It'd be able to go into the system, <coughs> excuse me, and look at and drill down and into things. So a key element of the system is this units of measure. We've already talked about the fact that someone wants gallons and pounds. Uh, and you can see we have tables that allow you to convert volume into weight units of measure. And when we do that, specific gravity or density is critical. So there's that capability and that's how we manage, again, the conversions from weight to volume, as well as formulas, recipes that might have uh, both liquids and volume in it. I picked an item that doesn't have any physical and chemical properties, but if I just knew that this item uh, had some black tea in it and 1% and that's something that I need to evaluate for that item, that's how you would build those. We, we're working on integrations and there's a strong part of Acumatica is the ability to bring data in. So there's a number of LOLI, right, and FDA databases that have uh, the chemical, physical properties of an item. So uh, there's not a necessarily need to key in those. Some of that could be automated should you choose. I'm gonna go back to the formula. Uh, and what you can see here is that within the system, we're able to create formulas using three different methods. We could do it based upon a percent of the weight. We could do it based upon a percent of the volume, or we could begin to deal with it in, in discrete units of measure. So again, critical in many cases where, right, it's not a discrete uh, unit of measure. When we begin to size that, that we're gonna be talking about in a little bit, when we size thing, obviously percentage and things make a little bit of a difference. Uh, different units of measure, as you saw in some other cases, this is just some basic inventory information where it's located. Backflush is really right an MRP, and that is Acumatica allows you to deal with uh, controlling inventory in two different ways. You could specifically issue material to a, a, a batch ticket, or you're able to backflush. Backflush meaning uh, that I'm going to go ahead and deplete inventory based upon how it is a standard, right? So a lot of process manufacturers will move some chemicals into a mixing area. They're gonna be mixing all day using those chemicals. And at the end of the day, they'll weigh off to find out how efficient they were. Critical in, key in process manufacturing is overage or line level losses, depending upon what industry you in this terms. And that's just to say that one of these items might be alcohol. So alcohol is gonna dissipate. So even though I'm indicating here how much alcohol I might need to use, I'm gonna to have to factor some in because it's gonna dissipate. Lower and upper level tolerances. For in some cases, uh, there's entities that have a recipe, but they do allow people to vary it a little bit based upon weather conditions, commodities, et cetera. Uh, so we could begin to do that here so that uh, if you if it's a witch's brew, if I could use that term, and people in the back are making some minor changes, we could begin to control how big those changes might be. 
we then are able to put in some consumables and byproducts and tools in overhead. And it really gets to the point of the totals, right? What we want to see for basic financial information is this information here, right? What are costs broken down by uh, the different types of these items? And again, because process manufacturers are very concerned in many cases about weight and volume, what's the cost per pound? What's the cost per gallon? Also some differences and things we need to build into the product is this loss here. This is zero, but think of this being production losses. We're gonna be computing yield as we're going through the process. And you actually saw that on one of the dashboards for completed orders, but you know we're gonna lose some uh, 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 mass when we're blending this item. So we might have a 5% loss. So now if we need to make 100, it's gonna tell us we really need to make 105 and suddenly the cost of the unit is gonna factor in that hunt making 105. Loss constant uh, is in, we're in some situations where it is uh, liquid. So there might be some filling lines and you're gonna be able to, you're gonna have to flush those uh, every time uh, you change over. Maybe it's a blending in a kettle and some of the material is going to stick to the bowl. Some of this material is going to stick to the paddle. So if it's material, and one of the things that Lucid does a great job on when they're consulting with customers is, right, there's always a cost value relationship to information. So if the loss constant, if that 10 gallons that you're draining uh, is not important, let's not bother necessarily with setting that up. However, if it's going to be a thousand gallons or your material is expensive, let's put this in there. So what that means is uh, if it's, we put a hundred gallons in here, we're going to flush. That means whether we make a thousand gallons, 10,000 gallons or a hundred gallons, all, all, we're always going to be able to cost and plan for that particular loss. Uh, there's a complete event history. Something that Acumatic is very strong in throughout the product uh, is keeping track of who did what when, right? This is a demo system, so it's always me or the administrator, but a, an important screen to look at uh, as you begin to deal with a variety of audit agencies. Mo the second, third, fourth most important thing is this capability of linking things together. So what we have is a formula, right? We're going to make this formula and it just so happens we're going to be putting it into different items. It's different pack sizes. So now I'm going to just drill into the bill material directly from here. And now what we see is we're making a five gallon can, right? It's an each, but five gallons are going to go into this. If I just toggle forward, what you begin to see is that I now have an item that I'm going to be putting into one gallon and it's just saying one fill level. So uh, we have some history with uh, a, uh, another batch processing system uh, that's been around for a long time, which is where a lot of this IP came from. So some people might be familiar with that. So again, we have fill. So that allows us to have an unlimited number of products, all focused on this um, formula, which we're maintaining in one place. And this is how we indicate how much is gonna go in. The rest of this is pretty straightforward much like we talked about in terms of the formula, what are we gonna do, right? If the, we, we could set this up in a couple ways, but all I need to do to turn this into a finished good is to take this form and then pack it. And we'll talk a little bit about batching in a little bit. Materials, I need that five gallon pail or the five gallons of that epoxy, as well as I need some labels and other items. In the same way as we saw before in a bill material uh, formula, I should say, we could have consumables, byproducts, tools, overhead, et cetera. I think in terms of the analysis, um, in terms of process manufacturing, many process manufacturers are co-packers, they're white labeling things. So the whole infrastructure, right, breaking down the formula from how we pack this out is this screen where we're constantly going to let you know what the cost of the formula is and what the cost of the packaging material is. So as you're doing analysis, right, commodity prices might go up. So you're evaluating that, but potentially you're taking the same formula and packing it out for Walmart and Kmart and Costco, whoever might be. And really what you're just evaluating is the added material cost. Uh, so that's where those items could be tracked and again, become important for many process manufacturers. And then there's this, just a general tab. Uh, I skipped over the fact that there's a whole uh, approval process uh, as it relates to uh, how we control formulas and how we make items. 
I'm now going to go into a little bit to show you uh, how th this works uh, in some uh, key functionality uh, as it relates to this item. I'm going to stop at batch types first. So uh, there's a number of different batch types. Um, sometimes I'm just going to make the ingredient, even though I'm not using orange juice with the data that I'm using, but we might make some orange juice. We might put it in a 500 gallon tank for later use. That's what we call an intermediate. So we have an intermediate type batch. We have a fill batch. That fill batch says, all I want to do today is fill one or two or five liter uh, orange juice bottles, whatever I might be doing. So now it's going to assume that that orange juice is already in a tank and I'm just going to pull it out. A mixed type batch, which I'm going to use for this purpose, is saying, you know what, I don't have any juice, uh, but I want to make both the juice or this particular chemical that I'm going to be making today. I'm going to make it as well as I'm going to uh, pack it at the same time. So I've chosen that formula. Again, a control is what's this saying? This is saying, you know what? I could only make three things now that I've decided what to make. I could put it into uh, different size bottles, large, small, or again, I can make that intermediate. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna indicate that I wanna make, I'm gonna go back and key this in. I'm gonna select another one. Sometimes my typing skills leave something to be desired. And I'm going to indicate this was E, right? That was there. I'm going to make 10 of these. Going back to MRP and planning, some things that Brian uh, probably talks about in other sessions is even though I'm manually putting this order in, right, it could get there because coming from MRP or we could indicate that a customer, it's a make to order environment. So out of the Acumatic order entry system, you could trigger trigger a production order and it'll be linked together. Or in our system, maybe I'm making this and I'm gonna assign this to a particular customer order right now. I'm not gonna save this. So that's the production person uh, who said, I wanna make this. Not necessarily the order you would maybe be from an operations end, but I'm gonna create a batch ticket uh, to just begin to show and look at some of the capabilities. The scheduling system is gonna tell me when I could start and stop this. I'm keeping track of both order weight and order volume. If we had some losses, right, these items are gonna be different. So I might be making more than I could fit into my pot. It's letting me know what finished goods I'm making. It's now take those run times, right, from a planning purpose. Now my scheduling system knows how long it's really gonna take me to make those 10. It has now sized up the formula. Uh, and we have a number of different sizing methods that you'll see in a second. Uh, it's size the formula. It's separated out the packaging material. We do this because in many cases when it's this mixed batch for an operation level, uh, I send an order back to the back that says, please blend the chemical and the people in the front are packing it out. Again, I have consumables, byproducts, overhead, outside costs if we're outsourcing things. And then I get costing, right? It all comes down to making money and being efficient. So now the system knows that uh, how long this should be taking is we're reporting. We're going to come back with the variances uh, that you saw on the dashboard. Now, before we begin to make something, batch sizing becomes important for uh, making things. In this case, I indicated that I just want to make it based upon the, the, the 10 that I'm making. I could go in for raw material availability. Uh, this is letting me know how much raw material we have. Usually when we do presentations, we have a lot of inventory so we can make things and not worry about writing purchase orders, et cetera, at least when we're trying to do this in 30, 35 minutes. Uh, but what this is going to allow me to do is that if any of these materials were short, it's going to let me know how much I can make. So forget that I want to make 10 based upon my inventory, again, based upon that bill material formula that might add percentages, how much I can make. We also have the capability of having key raw materials. What that is, is let's just say this epoxy uh, is a, a critical material. And this is saying I need 61. And maybe I have a lot, but I don't want to use all 61 in this particular batch because I need to make some other items. So now what the key availability will do is I can decide that I only want to use 50 of this item. And then it's going to tell me, forget how many I want to make, forget how many I could make because of how much inventory I have. It's going to tell me I only can make X based upon the 50 that I might want to use. 
And as you would think within process manufacturing, right, we might think uh, limit things based upon weight or based upon volume. Now, before I issue that production order, um, we, we have a key material report. Uh, again, a little bit of what you just saw is that because I uh, have a lot of inventory, it's going to show me I did, it showed me I didn't need anything. But in the real life, this is your shortage report. And from this screen, I'd be able to purchase, manufacture, or if you're a multi-site entity, you'll be able to go back and you'll be able to actually transfer things from other inventories. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to go into my batch ticket. And I'm going to release this batch ticket and just go through a couple transactions and then wrap up. I'm going to release this. Release this is saying I'm, uh, it's okay to make. So now the floor is going to begin to execute uh, what's going on. Uh, I'm going to do some material issues. Acumatica has WMS system, barcode data collection system, a whole set of items. I really just want to go here. Number one, this is the screen that you would use if you were kind of using Acumatica on a manual basis. Uh, but I went here just to indicate that Acumatica does lot and serial tracking, which you saw. But now Acumatica controls what lots we're going to use. You set up in the system whether this lot needs to be first in, first out, LIFO, early expiration date. You will define those rules. Based upon those rules, this is what you're going to use or Acumatica is saying you should use. And if I had another one, I would be able to choose that. So again, we have that capability of issuing material. Now I'm going to go back to that batch ticket again. And now I'm going to do a move and we're going to make some things pretty quickly now. And I, I want to do a batch move. Batch move is Acumatica's term that says uh, I'm going, I'm done. I want to move this. This is the last couple of points I just want to cover as it relates to the integration with quality. It's saying I can't move that. Why can't I move it? Because I'm going to go to my dashboard uh, with these boilerplate instructions. And this is those instructions that someone needed to uh, fill out that are saying, you know what, before we go through and make this item, I need to go in and I need to indicate, and this could be two people, someone needs to check it, someone says I need to complete, and now I'm going to complete that. So that is how we document the standard operating procedures are followed. Now, I went to quality control. There's a number of different alert systems within Acumatica, and I could just be using my dashboard. These change color. So these could be red and green to tell, tell you how effective Ralph is doing. But I get a quality of notification. Again, what did we want to do when we went from step one to step two? We wanted to stop. And we want to have someone tell us that uh, what that reading is. The system's going to say it passes. We do support ALQ, acceptable quality limits. So if there's some rules in place, we will evaluate the samples. And we're going to tell you whether this pass. I can now post it. So there could be three levels of security. Uh, if I could use the term security, someone could have a role of entering the results. Someone could have the role of evaluating the results and someone else could have the role of approving that. Or as you saw in my case, I'm just one person and I'm going to do it all. Now I'm going to go back to that batch ticket, right? Some demos, you just you try to prove to people that the system is going to work as you describe. Now I'm going to go back into that batch move and now I'm going to move it for cases. Next time we do this, I'm going to just going to make nine. So I have some yield issues. And now I'm just going to release this and the system's going to begin to uh, go through the process that is now released. And again, all the information has been updated based upon that. So I'm going to take a breath uh, and just indicate that what we want to show. We want to show the fact that we understand that traceability is critical. We understand that the physical and chemical makeup of an item are as important as the actual raw materials themselves for meeting standards, meeting labeling conditions. The, the fact that we could have a formula, that formula could be based upon uh, percentages, fixed amounts. It also could be on a stable amount. Uh, some people in the chemical industry have starters. So whether I'm going to make 100 pounds or 1,000 pounds, I need seven ounces of a starter. So the system is designed to put that in. So again, going back to that batch sizing, uh, unlike in a discrete bill material that just kind of 
says, gee whiz, if it was one, it's now 10. It's going to look at those percentages. And for that start, it's going to say, you know what? I don't move that amount at all. I don't increase it because that's the minimum amount that it needs to do. So hopefully that was a, be a good overview of what we're doing within the Acumatica world to make Acumatica very competitive uh, as it relates to process manufacturing. And again, the, the things that are different uh, within the process manufacturing world in terms of formulas, percentage, critical materials, et cetera. Oh,